Okay, let's talk about genetically modified babies. You may have heard that CRISPR technology is the key to reprogramming the human gene code. Reprogramming the gene code, what does that even mean? So we're all gonna become genetically modified organisms? GMOs, seriously? Is it gonna be like the movie Gattaca where we'll all be tall and thin and gorgeous and brilliant? And not to mention, I think this is very important, age and disease resistant? Well, maybe. But that's all a ways off. First off, we don't really know how to do most of that. Uh, so that's a bit of a problem. And secondly, reprogramming fully formed adults is not gonna be an easy task. I think the trick is to do the genetic manipulation on a human embryo. That way you're dealing with only a few cells rather than several trillion cells. And you have to start out with something fairly simple, say throwing a single genetic switch to prevent a single disease. And of course, that was the big breaking news a couple weeks ago when a Chinese scientist claimed to have genetically modified two twin baby girls to make them resistant to the HIV virus. Did he really do it? Will it work? Was it a good idea? And is this the beginning of the age of designer babies and designer adults? Well, stay tuned. That's what we're talking about in this edition of Better All the Time. Live to see it, friends, and welcome to Better All the Time. The show explores new technologies and new possibilities for making our world better and better. I'm Phil Bowermaster, and today we're going to be talking about designer babies. You know what? It started a couple weeks ago with this story. Chinese scientist claims to use CRISPR to make first genetically edited babies. Let me read a bit from this. A scientist in China announced that he had created the world's first genetically edited babies, twin girls who were born this month. The researcher, He Zhuing Kui, said that he had altered a gene in the embryos before having them implanted in the mother's womb with the goal of making the babies resistant to infection with HIV. He's not published the research in any journal and did not share any evidence or data that definitively proved he had done it. Okay, well, the story goes on to say that Dr. He did this because the father was infected with HIV, and this was a way of ensuring that his children would not be. Um, yeah, no. I mean, yes, Maybe if what he did worked, it would ensure that the babies will be HIV-free throughout their lives, which, of course, is a wonderful thing. But he makes it sound like he was trying to make sure that he wouldn't infect his children with HIV in the process of conceiving them. The thing is, they were obviously using in vitro fertilization, and there are ways to make sure the virus isn't passed without going to all this trouble. For that, this was some serious overkill. And even if that is a good goal to try to achieve, it isn't the whole story. There's some other issues, too. So now you have this story. Flawed DNA editing of alleged designer babies may have put their health at risk. Reading from the story, the data shows that the babies weren't edited very precisely, says Eric Topol, a geneticist at Scripps Research Institute. Similarly, CRISPR expert Gaetan Bergio, a geneticist at Australian National University, says that the slides he, that's Dr. He, provided showed very amateur work. I can't believe he did it because it's so bad, he says. All right, well, that's not great. So what's the problem? What's so bad? Well, let's read a little further from the story. Everyone has two copies of each gene, one from each parent. But Nana, that's one of the twins, had only one copy of CCR5, which was one of the genes that was edited. Plus, both babies have a combination of cells with an edit and without an edit. This is, quote, absolutely devastating, says Bergio, because it means that the babies still have the normal gene. So they're probably not HIV resistant at all. Okay, now just think about that for a moment. Not being HIV resistant is normal. Few, if any of us, are actually resistant to HIV. But what happens when you think you're resistant to HIV, when someone has performed a procedure on you and told you that you are, but you're actually not? Now that's bad. And let's read a little further. Editing one part of the DNA using this method could harm other parts of an organism's genetic code. This is called off-target effects. For example, it's possible to accidentally disrupt a system that protects from eye cancer when using CRISPR to edit something completely different. In He's case, 
The team found one new mutation in Lulu, that's the other twin, that could have been caused by CRISPR, but decided it was safe. Still, Bergio says that the sequencing methods they used to check for off-target effects weren't enough, and it's possible the babies both have CRISPR-caused mutations that could harm their health. Okay, so now this is a real double whammy. Not only are these twins likely not HIV-resistant, although their parents were told that they are, they may develop other unanticipated problems in the future. And let's keep in mind, these are newborn babies who had this done to them when they were embryos. They had no say in this whatsoever. Okay, so what am I saying? That we shouldn't try to mess with nature? That designer babies are a bad idea? Well, I don't think it's quite that simple. Let's take a look at this story, which was published a bit before the news came out about the designer baby twins. Here's the headline. Designer babies aren't futuristic. They're already here. So this story talks about a couple who discover that the husband has and is a carrier for genetic dystonia. And this is a condition which causes muscle to contract uncontrollably. His case is pretty mild, but it's possible that any children he fathers may have a much more severe version of it. It's not really likely that that will happen, but it could. So the couple learn that when it comes to having kids, they do have an option here. And reading from the story, they could undergo in vitro fertilization and have their embryos genetically tested while still in a laboratory dish. Using a technology called pre-implantation genetic testing, they could pick the embryos that had not inherited the dystonia mutation. So again, this is like what we said about preventing HIV infection. It's a straightforward procedure that doesn't require any genetic manipulation. In this case, you just pick the embryo you want. The story goes on to say, public opinion on the use of assisted reproductive technology consistently draws the distinction between preventing disease and picking traits. Okay, well, two things about that. First, preventing a disease is picking a trait. So let's not kid ourselves about that. But more importantly, maybe, selecting an embryo is very different from rewriting an embryo. And we should look at those things differently and think about them differently. That doesn't mean that making designer babies is wrong, but it does mean that we have to be careful. First off, we need to be sure we know what we're doing. And we have to be sure that the benefits outweigh the risks. Now, one of the risks that's been pointed out is that if these kinds of treatments become available, and they're safe, and they work, they're still going to be very expensive. So, will we potentially have a situation where the rich have children who never have to worry about afflictions that only the poor suffer from? That doesn't seem fair, does it? So then we have this piece, which was also published before the news about the twin girls broke. This is from Ilya Soman of the Volok Conspiracy, and it was published by Reason.com. So check this out. In defense of designer babies, why we should not let fears about inequality stand in the way of technological progress that could potentially make the next generation healthier, happier, and smarter. Soman writes, if designer baby technology is available to some, but not all families, it will save many parents from the risk of passing on genetic diseases. It will also actually reduce the overall amount of inequality by reducing the percentage of the population afflicted with those diseases. It could be particularly valuable to families and ethnic groups with a history of genetic diseases that would otherwise present would-be parents with the painful choice of either foregoing children, except perhaps by adoption, or risking passing on a debilitating condition. As with many other technological breakthroughs, designer baby options are likely to become available to the relatively affluent before they spread to the rest of the population. But, based on past precedent, they're also likely to become cheaper over time and spread to more of the population. Even those who cannot initially take advantage of the new technology, or who simply do not need it, can benefit from its introduction. They, too, will be better off for living in a society where fewer people's potential is stifled by genetic disease, and more can therefore live happy and productive lives. And I think that's exactly right. If we always waited until we could treat everybody before we could treat anybody, new medical treatments would be very slow coming. And plus, don't we want to do the good we can do now, if we can do it? I, for one, would not want to look a suffering child in the eye and say, sorry, we could have helped you with this, but we couldn't help everybody, so no. Meanwhile, coming back to our original story, things have taken an interesting turn now, haven't they?
Here's the headline. Chinese scientists who edited twin girls' genes missing for over a week. After hundreds of scientists, the Chinese government, and even his own university denounced him, Dr. He has seemingly disappeared and has not been heard from since last Wednesday. China's Vice Minister of Science and Technology, Zhu Nanping, quickly shut down Dr. He's lab, ordering a full investigation and flagging some form of punishment for the researchers. So rumors are that Dr. He is under house arrest. Assuming that's true, and he's eventually subject to criminal charges, I don't think we'll be hearing much more from Dr. He anytime soon, or ever again, possibly. However, in his absence, the discussion about designer babies continues. The World Health Organization to discuss genome editing while Dr. He is missing. The WHO will establish a panel of experts to study the potential uses of genome editing in humans and formulate guidelines for use of the technology. The panel was announced by the WHO's Director General, who says, Gene editing may have unintended consequences. This is uncharted water and it has to be taken seriously, he told a news conference in Geneva. We will work with member states to do everything we can to make sure of all issues, be it ethical, social safety, before any manipulation is done. Well, best of luck to the World Health Organization in working all that out. Clearly, there need to be guidelines and standards. My one caution on that quote is the word all. We will never work out all the potential issues with this or any other new technology. What we have to do is make sure that the benefits outweigh the risk as far as we're able to reasonably assess them. For genetic manipulation, the benefits are potentially huge, but so are the downsides. So, will this technology make our world a better place? Is this a fitting story to do on Better All the Time? I think right now we all have our work cut out for us in figuring that one out. And that's going to do it for this edition of Better All the Time. Thanks for joining us, and until next time, live to see it.